in this lecture we will talk about the ias 36 that is impairment of non current asset now as far as impairment is concerned uh, it is uh, applicable on uh, uh, many assets but uh, primarily uh, you should know that uh, uh, we have already studied IA 16 property plan and equipment as well as IS 38 intangible asset. So you have to apply this uh, IS 36 on both tangible assets and intangible assets. So first of all, what is the objective of this standards? The objective of this standard is to ensure that assets are carried at no more than their recoverable amount. So basically there are two terminologies one is the carrying amount, which is the balance sheet value. You can also say that it's a net book value. And other is the recoverable amount. That is the benefit that you can drive from that particular asset. And the objective says that assets cannot be carried at more than their recoverable amount. So for example, if carrying amount is 100,000, and recoverable amount is only 80,000. So you cannot show the asset at more than its recoverable amount. And next objective is how to identify recoverable amount. Now, let's see what are the definitions uh, covered under this accounting standard. First of all, the impairment loss. What is impairment loss? The amount by which the carrying amount of an asset or cash generating unit at exceed its recoverable amount. In simple words, if carrying amount is greater than recoverable amount, that excess is called impairment loss. Now, what is carrying amount? The carrying amount is the value at which an asset is recognized in the statement of financial position after deducting the accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment losses. That is the book value. And normally this is the balance sheet value, which is the book value after deducting all the accumulated depreciation. Now, what is recoverable amount? It is the higher of an asset's fair value less cost of disposal, number one, and its value in use. So recoverable amount, if you have to identify recoverable amount, you have to identify two values. One is fair, val fair value less cost of disposal and other is value in use. And you have to opt the higher of, not the lower of value. What is fair value? Fair value, which is usually the market value, is the price that would be received when you are selling an asset or paid when you are transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. And this is the definition you can study in IFRS 13 fair value measurement. So fair value is the price in case of an asset that we received, but that sale is subject to a transaction between market participant at the measurement date. As far as value in use is concerned, this is the present value of all future cash flows you can expect to be derived from an asset or a cash generating unit. For example, if you have a machine available and its remaining life is five years. So what future cash flows you can expect from this machine, you can identify the PV of that future cash flows and that PV of future cash flows would become the value in use. Now, how we can identify whether an asset or group of asset is impaired or not. So at the end of each reporting period, an entity is required to assess whether there is any indication that an asset may be impaired. And what is that indicate indication? that its carrying amount is greater than its recoverable amount. So it is indicator based testing. If you, if you know that uh, if there, is, if there is any indicator exists, then you have to identify the assets uh, recoverable amount. There are external indicators and internal indicators of impairment. 
if there is an indication that an asset is subject to impairment, then recoverable amount must be calculated. But there are few assets for which impairment testing must be performed on an annual basis rather than the basis of the indicator. So the recoverable amount of the following types of intangible assets are measured annually, whether or not there is any indication that it may be impaired. And what are those intangible assets? Number one, an intangible asset with an indefinite useful life, an intangible asset not yet available for use. Example might be the deferred development expenditure. An intangible asset with, a, with an indefinite life, purchase brand name. And goodwill acquired in a business combination. So these three items are subject to an annual impairment review irrespective of any indicator. You have to find out the recoverable amount at the end of each reporting period. Now, as far as indicators are concerned, there are few external source of indicators or external indicators. One is the market value decline. That is the fall in the prices. If there is any fall in the price of asset that, uh, that is available to you, it means that you have to check whether its recoverable amount is different from its carrying amount and whether carrying amount is higher or lower. Similarly, if there is any negative changes with respect to technology, with respect to market, with respect to economy, or with respect to law. For example, if economic condition is going down, this is a big indicator of impairment. Similarly, if uh, there is a change in technology, so you have to identify the recoverable amount. The third one is when there is an increase in interest rate. The increase in interest rate is considered to be an indicator because the value in use is present value of future cash flows. So if interest rate increases, then present value decreases, making a difference between the carrying amount and the recoverable amount. And the fourth one is when the net asset of the company, that is assets minus liabilities, is higher than the market capitalization, which is the current worth of the shares. So if current worth of shares is less than the net assets, it means that it's an indicator of impairment. There are a few internal indicators. Number one is when there is some obsolescence or physical damage, for example, due to fire or flood, an asset was damaged. Number two, when asset is idle or is part of a restructuring plan or held for disposal under IFRS 5. In these situations, there are chances that an asset might be impaired. And the third one is when asset is not performing as per the expectation. So if an asset you are expecting the benefit, but you are not getting that benefit, it means there is something wrong and you have to identify the recoverable amount. An indication that an asset may be impaired may indicate that the assets useful life, depreciation method, or residual value may need to be reviewed and adjusted. It means these are connected with the uh, impairment. So if an asset is impaired, it means its life might be affected. You have to change the depreciation method or residual value might not be same as you have expected originally. Now question is how to identify recoverable amount. I already uh, told you in the definition that it is the higher of fair value less cost to sell and value in use. So if fair value less cost of disposal or value in use is more than carrying amount, it is not necessary to calculate the other amount. The asset is not impaired. For example, value in use is 100 million and carrying amount is 90 million. Now, there is no need to calculate the fair value less cost to sell because it indicates that the asset is not impaired. If fair value less cost of disposal cannot be determined, then recoverable amount is only value in use. 
and for asset to be disposed of such as in ifrs 5 recoverable amount is only fair value less cost of disposal so recoverable amount is usually higher of value in use and fair value less cost but if fair value is not possible then it's only value in use and if there is no value in use then it is only fair value less cost to disposal in order to determine the fair value less cost of disposal you have to identify fair value as per ifrs 13 that is fair value measurement rule and cost of disposal is the direct added cost only not existing cost or overhead means if you want to sell an asset what is the cost that is required in order to sell that asset for example the commission or the uh, selling cost if there is an impairment loss if you have identified there is an impairment loss and carrying amount is greater than recoverable amount for example 100 million is the carrying amount and 95 is the recoverable amount so there is 5 million of impairment loss now what is the accounting treatment of impairment loss the impairment loss is recognized as an expense in profit and loss account unless it relates to a revalued asset for example you are identifying an impairment loss of a property plan and equipment which is already being revalued and there is a revaluation surplus already existed that is 20 million now you have identified in the subsequent period that there is an impairment loss of 10 million now, if revaluation surplus is there and impairment loss arises subsequently, then we will not charge this impairment loss in profit and loss account. Rather than we have to offset this with revaluation surplus. And then the impairment loss would be treated as a revaluation decrease. So the entry would be revaluation surplus debit and asset credit rather than profit and loss account debit and asset credit and then you have to adjust depreciation for the future period 